Ehi Dogen, who's a Zen master, says that um, enlightenment is just intimacy with everything. And I love that because intimacy with life, like being present in your life, being present with like, that's, that's what this book was for me. It was a chance to get intimate with me and my life and then the human condition as well. And then now hopefully the music is that other layer. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Release Day Series podcast. I'm your host, Alex Heward. Very excited to have you tune in to this episode. It's going to be a great, great listen. Before we get to that, I just got to say, does anybody know what time of the year it is? Because if you don't, I can tell you it's allergy season. I am absolutely croaking over here. I don't know if you can tell in my voice, see to my eyes on the video version, but my goodness, if there are two things that I know get worse as you get older, it's allergies and hangovers. And I can't seem to take enough reactant or Advil to get beyond those. But uh, that's enough about me. I think I think I know where the problem uh, lies with those things. That's me. Um, my conversation today is with an incredible human being. Uh, she's an amazing singer, an, an amazing songwriter. She's also a, a playwright. She's a social activist. And now she's a best-selling author, Tara McLean. What an incredible artist she is. She has been in the business for a long time. And I, I got to be honest, I'd never heard of Tara until her publicist dropped her book, her debut memoir, and her new album, Sparrow, into my inbox. And I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like ashamed about that a little bit. Although knowing Tara, she'd be like, no, don't like, come on. Like she's such an incredible person. You'll hear that in our conversation. Um, but she, she kind of feels like Canada's hidden gem or, or to, to me, she's sort of like a hidden gem of, of Canada uh, of Canadian arts and, and music because her songwriting capabilities, her, her melody writing, it's just, uh, next level unbelievable and you know she was signed uh, her first first album came out on network records back in 1996 uh she would actually sign with capital records emi canada with her juno nominated band shay and it just uh, uh, an incredible touring career to this point as well so she has lived it for a long time she was discovered on a boat we'll talk about that and it's just been an incredible an incredible life to read about in her memoir. And that is really what a lot of our conversation is about is her memoir and just a, an absolutely incredible, inspiring, difficult, like it unimaginable at times life that she lived has lived is living. Sorry, Tara, you're still living. You're still here. And it's just, it, it was just absolutely, it's just absolutely inspiring. And I'm, and I'm really excited for you to hear this conversation. I hope you leave having listened to this conversation also inspired. Uh, please go get her book, Song of the Sparrow, listen to the album. It's just, uh, it, it's it's so great. I, I don't know I don't know what else to say. I think you're really going to enjoy the conversation. Um, just briefly, Song of the Sparrow. Let me give you a bit of a synopsis. It is a daring, heartbreaking, and provocative memoir of a life filled with music told with the same raw, open, and elegant poetry that Terrace fans have come to expect. From her early days in PEI through her teenage years in BC to her meteoric rise in music, Song of the Sparrow reveals Terrace's remarkable strength and shows that a song and a wide open heart are the best weapons for fighting monsters and uh, uh, you know, those monsters come in, in various forms, but it does come in the form of sexual abuse. And I will say that we do touch on not in depth, but there are a conversation of sexual abuse. So I just want to make sure that you as a listener are aware that some of those topics do come up in our conversation. So I am really excited to share this chat with you. Please remember, you can always go to our website, releasedayseries.com to find more episodes of our podcast, our limited video series, and of course, sign up for our, however, weekly, monthly uh, newsletter. But of course, when you sign up, you get a really cool pitching document that uh, put together with Carrie Zalik of Bad Parade. So make sure you sign up and get your hands on that. All right. Broadcasting from the traditional territory of the Williams Treaties First Nations, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, Wendat, Inuit, and Métis peoples, this is my conversation with Tara McLean. Congratulations on the acclaim so far. It's uh, It must be, you know, the first week the book has been out. It, 
just like mm-hmm. it's kind of like what you look for right off the bat i guess eh? is that what you're looking you, you do as an author now i don't yeah. know i mean it's my first time being an author thank you alex um yeah it is it's thrilling. I mean, you you can dream about being a best-selling author, but what are the chances? Yeah. You know. So the fact that it's it's actually happened is I'm just still pinching myself. I it just happened the other day, so I can't stop smiling, and I'm so grateful because I have this amazing team that just we've been working our butts off for the last six months um, to try and get the word out and. You know, just it's just so great. It's so exciting. Absolutely. I'm grateful to everyone who bought it. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, mm-hmm. your, the book "Song of the Spirit." Let's just start off. Yeah. To, just li- to the listeners, what is the book all about? Mm-hmm. I've had the pleasure of being able to read it, so we can have a nice conversation about it here. Um, I, w- I don't want to miss anything because there's so much that happens in it. How do you sum up what this book is about? <laughs> Gosh, I guess I would probably say that you know it's it's a memoir it's the story of my life um and it is sort of the way that music was my life raft and helped me survive and um and how when once we find our superpowers that that's what helps us to you know overcome our circumstances yes and Mm -hmm. and plenty of circumstances that you you found yourself (laughs) in over over the course of yeah. your life, I, I was I was trying to like think about how do you how do you talk about this? How do you tell people about this book? But I just I just thought like you've just been through so much. Like you've you've endured, you've mourned, you've celebrated. I think more than so many people will ever do in one lifetime in in yours. And God, that must have been was that easy to write about? Difficult to write about some of these these circumstances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, both. Uh, uh, there were. I think it was time for the story to be told because as soon as the circumstances arose that I was able to write the book, and I'll share that because it was quite magical as well. But it just fell out of me. So like the the mu- the words and the and the music and everything that was just coming through me just kind of fell on the page, and so that was easeful. But the content was sometimes hard to address because it it was like, do I tell this story? I'm aware my children are going to be reading this. Um, I get up on stage and open my heart when I sing songs, but can I do it in 300 pages? And you know, for a you know, and it was a, over a two year writing okay. process, right? So. Um, yeah, it was a really giant excavation, you know, an archaeological dig of epic proportions. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and it was really satisfying. And I was like, oh, so that's why I'm like this. And <laughs> that's why I'm like that. And now I, I just understand myself so much better. And, um, you know, and I feel so light as a result of writing. The yeah. Book. So, yes, hard, easy. But I had to be brave, and it's so worth it. Definitely. So why, like, why did you sit down to write? Like, what, what was it that you were like? It's, it's time to tell my story. What was, what was that push that you had to, to get going with that? Life just presented me with this amazing opportunity. So yeah. one day I was in. Uh, I'll give you the long story. Uh, sure. One day I was it's in. It's a podcast. In, we got all the time. Right? <laughs> Yay! I'm learning to be a little bit more long form. Um, yeah. I was in a yoga class and this these words started coming to me, this sort of essay. And I ran home and I wrote this short essay about being a woman in the music business and body image. And sometimes when you're standing in a yoga class, it was a moto hot yoga, <laughs> which I love. And sometimes your perception when you first go into the room of yourself is one thing. And then once you go through your practice and like take away all those old stories, there's this really raw version of yourself. And this essay just sort of fell out when I got home and I called Davnit Doyle, who was a bandmate of mine. And I said, I just wrote this piece. Can you read it? And she said, post that, post that now you have to post it. And I was so scared to post it because it was super, super vulnerable. And, uh, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of an extrovert and I, you know, it was pandemic, like early pandemic. I was really missing communicating. So I was like, yeah. here, I'm just doing it. So I did that. And then a literary agent, Carolyn Ford from Transatlantic, saw the piece. Davnet had shared it and saw it. Mm. And we were in contact then. And she said, I think you should write a book. And I said, that's a great plan. I had just gone through a divorce um, of my husband after being together for 16 years. And 
I was looking for something to do. <laughs> you know, there wasn't a lot of live performance going on, and and then you know, Carolyn really held my hand and coaxed me through how to write the first few chapters, and then mm. she she shopped it and Harper Collins picked it up right away. And I had the great pleasure of working with Jennifer Lambert, who is their chief editor. And she taught me how to write a book basically. And it was just, it was a very magical way that it all unfolded just from like having that little blast of courage to share something super vulnerable to a book deal yeah. and on the bestseller <laughs> list and I'm freaking out, but I'm yeah. calm. I'm cool. I'm good. It's calm I'm cool. crazy. Well, you know what I got to say, like it just led like, Tara, you are so good at what you do as a, as a, as a writer and as a songwriter, as a musician, because and we'll get into talking about the album as well that accompanies this and sort of your music career that you talk about kind of getting started, not kind of, about getting started in the book. And it's almost the same, it's sort of the same way, you know, discovered on a boat, yes. you, you wrote this article and you put it out there and then people want to come and help you because it's just, it's just so so good that you know not to just keep tooting your horn but it is it is like everything Yay. that that you have written and done and uh you know to be able to go out there and and yeah just lay it all out for everyone is mm. absolutely incredible and brave Thank you. and i think that's kind of the whole I- idea right with with mm-hmm. this with this book because I just want to read a quote. So you, you had a great uh, piece too in the Toronto star that came out uh, mm-hmm. with, uh, with Ben Rayner. And so I, I was trying to always, as I've been saying, like what's the best way to sort of talk about the, the takeaway from, from the book, if you know, everything mm-hmm. needs to have a takeaway, but I just love what you said here. Okay. To quote Tara McLean from Toronto star. Honestly, I don't know how to feel some moments. I feel exhilarated and fierce and excited and wide open and other moments. I just want to like curl into a fetal position and go, <laughs> what have I done? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot of feelings, but for me, I think it's yeah. time to tell the story. I think it could help people. And mm-hmm. that's why I'm doing it. And I think, you know, whether it's the direct, um, people have experienced directly what you have experienced through the book mm-hmm. or just going through something that they see this, wow, like look at what, you know, this, this woman has been able to do throughout her life and continue mm-hmm. to move forward positively and find the positive outlooks in life. So mm-hmm. I don't really have like a conclusion to that point, but I mm-hmm. just wanted to point out, like, I think it's just a great summation of, of why, people should should read this book and what a kind of motivation and and uh, empowerment they can walk away from with having read your story oh thank you so there much you and honestly <laughs> like what what i've been through isn't unique i just think right. i've maybe been through a lot of things like i'm sort of in an accelerated learning class here in earth school yes. um yeah. so i <laughs> Uh, you know, there are people who've been through way worse, um, survived way more difficult circumstances. Um, but you know, one of the things that, that I have is the ability to share my internal landscape and, and how I did it. And I feel really lucky about that, that I have a language that can, you know, connect with people maybe who don't have the language of how to, um, how to overcome, uh, these obstacles in life. Um, and so that for that I'm very I'm very lucky and then now to have the the vehicle of this book um and so yeah it's just it's you know I, I didn't set out to write any kind of self-help book or anything like that um I wanted to really just write this long poem this an ode to um to love and power of, of art and music um and uh and but it is actually people I'm getting letters from survivors of assault um, from, you know, from mothers, from lawyers and judges and counselors and people saying, like, I am putting this in our library. I am getting this into the hands of survivors. I am, you know, and and that is it. Like, that is why we do this. You know, Mm -hmm. I write songs because they heal me. And Mm -hmm. then I started noticing that when I shared them, people came up to me and said, hey, like that, that song got me through. And we need to get each other through this time, you know, in fact, always we need each other. And so my hope is that this book is, is my offering to other people as to, you know, how we can get through this together. And so what I'm loving the most, like the, the incredible feeling of being known, like deeply known by thousands of readers, all of a sudden, like they know me through music, but suddenly I feel known and I'm getting stories back. 
And, and that, that co-sharing of had the heaviness of life makes it lighter and makes it easier to bear. And that's, um, you know, when life feels dark, that's, that's all we have. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to take this book and just infuse it with as much light as I could, even while telling difficult things and Mm -hmm. then just offer it and see what happens. And Uh, so far so good. So, (laughs) yeah, well, you know what it is? It's like, it's channeling, you know, your, your sexual education teacher in high school is channeling your grade five teacher, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of what I'm feeling from it, you know, once you read through those parts. So, you know, just to address sort of the underlying theme here, but Tara, a survivor of sexual abuse as from mm-hmm. a, you know, at a, a young age and an older mm-hmm. age as well. And you got that piece of advice from your sexual education teacher that it's your body, nobody else should touch it. And that really triggered something inside of you to say, this is not right. And mm-hmm. that's, that's the, the, you know, again, you yeah. say it's not right. That's the mindset. Mm-hmm. That's the trigger. That's the flip, the switch. Right. And you kind of education, s- <laughs> education. Right. And knowing that, oh my goodness, it's that it's, and I feel like that's kind of the wisdom, maybe subconsciously or consciously you can impart and are imparting on survivors or victims, current victims that that's right. Hold on a second. This is, this is wrong. And you know, we need yeah. to do something about this and, and tell someone you trust. Yeah. You know, talk about it, speak out, report, you know, like that kind of thing, like find your voice because that's one thing, you know, when that proverbial hand goes over your mouth to try and silence you in those moments, um, you know, it's really important to, to find someone else who's maybe taken it off and, and shared. And, and I, it's such a whistleblowing book. Um, so, you know, I really hope that people find the courage in that, you know, through the little girl that I was when I, when I found that courage, um, to speak out and to, you know, tell my family and tell my teacher, you know, like it was just so, such a great moment and to be received with so much love. Like I know everyone isn't always going to be believed or supported or, and sometimes it's really scary to, to do this. And it, it was even for me, but I knew, I knew that my teacher would help me hold this and would help, would help me. And she did. So you know, I'm really lucky. Lucky for Mary Lou Morrison. Yes, there you mm-hmm. go. Yeah, who would you, who you, you you would see her later on in life too at a show, right? That was, That's that right. was she would pop up. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. She came to uh, my show, and because one of my songs, "Evidence," my very first single, was about that abuse, I sort of, mm-hmm. I, I wove and and hid the stories of my life into those into those songs but it was my first single you know and so it was out there and she came to me at the show and said i i know what you were writing about and the first time i heard the song i remembered and i thought about you and i'm just so proud of you and it was just such a beautiful moment yeah you know last quote i want to take out of that toronto Mm -hmm. star just to just to kind of wrap up this part is Mm -hmm. the the uh, you know you talk about it as you mentioned it's kind of a whistleblowing book it's to give people Mm -hmm. this you know uh that it's, you know, go and, and, and tell people to help make things better. But I th- think still what you get out of like your perspective by the end of this book, uh, th- I absolutely loved what you said here. So again, to quote Tara McClain from the Toronto Star, really the perspective I was trying to look at my life with was all of us are these fallible humans stumbling around, making mistakes and hurting each other. And I think that just deserves a ton of compassion. I want to understand why people do the things they do. And that was really a part of of the exploration, right? So mm-hmm. it just yeah. like I, I just I was like, yes, like absolutely. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make what happened to you or what people did right just because we all make mistakes. But I, but for me, it was that you came away and you've gone through life with that kind of mentality. I mean, you've been mm-hmm. through so much more. People, you need to read this book to really understand um, you know, Tara's life because it is a memoir, and it's just I, I loved that. Was a great way to put it all together for why yeah there's just com- compassion for us as human mm. beings and yeah, it just it, it we're just so vulnerable and it's possible for anybody yeah. to make to make a mistake that's so true yeah thank you for quoting that one um absolutely i mean that's the yeah. thing is that i'm i am naming names i'm sharing the things yeah. that people have done but I am also trying to illustrate the perhaps the underlying causes and reasons. I mean, I I have so much ignorance in me. I have made I've hurt people. I've made huge mistakes, um, and like learning to forgive myself and others has been this incredible process. And and a lot of that it ha- really has to do with um, with not seeing myself as separate 
from the other pe- the people in the world. I mean, we are all this one human organism and, and a lot of times we're, we're really unwell. And, you know, I think I, I was reading this one thing Buffy St. Marie said one time about, you know, someone asked her, you know, how do you forgive for, you know, for the atrocities that have happened? And she said, I just remember that we're a really young species. Wow. And I always loved that, you know, and I can look at the people who are monsters in in life mm-hmm. and see them with the bird's eye view. That's the song of the sparrow, right? It's like getting yeah. up above it, not being in it and in the charge and in the pain and in the fury and in the anger, and which are important. Like the rage is important. Um, but once that like whew, settles and you can see it, um, I mean, the view is magnificent. It really is because they were all my teachers. Every single person that caused me pain was probably some of my, my greatest teachings um, on my own in my own strength and on love and on understanding. So, but I mean, it's a real process. You know, you can't just jump right to forgiveness. It's not can't be forced. You know, right. it and you'll see it through. Like when I the the point in the book where I confront my grandfather in the nursing home is like a moment where it like that to me is sort of the pinnacle of the book yeah. where I, I realize like who I am on the battlefield, you know, with my nemesis and it, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's really cool um, to be able to, to have that perspective, but that perspective comes from a lot of years of counseling and Zen practice and um, you know, and processing with my family and, and working through things and even, even sitting in the room with, with perpetrators of the abuse and, and in, in family therapy sessions, like to learn to forgive and, and, and rise above. So yeah. yeah. Getting people help, the restorative justice, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and, yeah. And you, and you, and you can see that, that kind of growth, that, uh, well growth, that evolution, which however you want to look at it through the book from the, from the beginnings to, you know, with how you felt about your, uh, you know, your, stepdad Izzy and then kind of yeah. just kind of you know like know. like even that you know I just I love I, I love just sort of this like as we're kids I think you really spell it out really great as we're kids we kind of see these people who are kind of like you know oh this is how I feel immediately and this is this is how yeah. I'm going to treat you and then you kind of go through these little situations with them where you have animals pooping on you that's kind of like oh okay this guy's not, this guy's not so bad yeah, uh, yeah like like certifiably bipolar right like yeah. but um <laughs> And the, and the tragedy and the comedy that comes with it all and, and, and yeah. the love, you know, like, and as, yeah, as we get older, we definitely have better understandings. And yeah. so I tried to pepper the book, even when I was writing about my childhood with sort of perspective from now, exactly. you know, just to try and like say, now I get it. Now I get what was happening. But exactly. at the time, are you kidding me? Like, are yes. you kidding me? I was I driving in a car at 12 years old. Like, <laughs> are you kidding? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wouldn't have, wouldn't, I don't know if you'd see that so much today, but no. uh, <clears throat> definitely, definitely back then. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> so the book, uh, let's uh, obviously we've been talking about the book, but it, to write a book like this, mm-hmm. you've got to go yeah. back. You've got to go yeah. so far back. H- how do you do that? How do you kind of go back and dig into those memories who who are you talking with how what stands out and what stood out in your mind that you were like okay i remember this river moment where i fell into a river and i was drowning and you know i that Mm -hmm. seems pretty you know um like scary so that probably Mm -hmm. you probably remember that yeah imprinted Uh, for sure in my amygdala yeah for sure um (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know that your your house was set fire you ran out of a burning house just before Mm-hmm. It blew I was carried up. out. Mm-hmm. Carried out, sorry, mm-hmm. right, yes, by the police officer. And then, mm-hmm. you, so those things, like, you know, you remember those things. But one of the Definitely. things, like, <laughs> you're sitting, you remember sitting in a church pew, and then when everybody had their eyes closed, you would sneak out. You know, like, yeah. how, how do you kind of come back to those memories? How did you come back to those mm-hmm. those memories to, 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 write them, to write them in this memoir? Well, I have a crazy memory and it's, okay. ve- it's That's very, <laughs> very close to photographic. Okay. It, like I don't, I don't read music. I don't, you know, right. I, I remember like, that's how I've trained my brain. Um, because I, I didn't have the opportunity to, to get musical training. Um, and so, yeah, so I, maybe that, like that mixture of music and, yeah. 
and just having a, a wild life um, and a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful life has allowed me to, you know, to be able to remember very well. I also had the great gift of being in lockdown with my mother through a lot of this, this process. Right. So she and I would wake up in the morning and have our coffee together. And, she, you know, she would help me paint the pictures of the cabin and I would share my memories. And she would say, she would say things like, for example, like, living in the natural world off grid and being a completely free range kid. I mean, I was able to just wander the forest from the time I was very little. And, and so my relationship with the natural world was so real. And, um, I don't know, just like, just my memories of picking the flowers and my love, my deep love of the, the flora and fauna of the land. Uh, and then she would say, oh yeah, like I would have a jar on the kitchen table and you would go out every morning and you would pick a new handful of things and you would come back with all these treasures and that jar was our art gallery. Like that was your art gallery there where, you, you know, and she, so she would tell me her vision of what it was like. And so I was able to, you know, throw those little details in, um, you know, I had a, I had a pet spider, you know, these are things she reminded me of, like, I didn't remember that, but I remembered the snakes. I remembered, you know, and, and then I remembered sort of the relationship with the spider webs and the beauty of, you know, of all of that. So she really helped me a lot. So that process was there with the childhood stuff, but I just, yeah, honestly, I have a great memory. Thank goodness. And I, um, and I just, I loved it because Prince Edward Island was such a beautiful place to grow up. It's such yeah. a magical landscape. And I really, you know, I got torn away from it because uh, of the house fire and because this man tried to kill our family. Yeah. And so I, I wanted to write a love letter to it. I wanted to, I wanted people to know one of the reasons I turned out okay was because Prince Edward Island, the land or Epiquet as it's called by the first people, like it it raised me. It really did. I, I love, I love to hear that you, you were with your mother. There's, again, there's just so much within this memoir of yours that is like, what is the relationship now? Like, you know, mm. what, how does the relationship that you kind of go through with, um, each of your parents and, uh, um, you know, from your stepfathers to your real father, Danny. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was, I was at the point in your book where Marty, uh, was driving away he was mm. driving away on you and that was like so hard for you. Cause you didn't see him. I think was it eight years, eight mm. years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eight years after that moment. And then I logged in to, to Instagram and there was a photo you had posted of you and him having sung, uh, at a, at a show. And I was like, Oh, it yeah. gets better. But it was just such, it was like perfect timing. It was like, Oh man, I can't believe this. Like, Oh, this is devastating. And then, Instagram. And I was like, Oh, there he is. There she is. Yeah. And unfor you know, unfortunately he's, he's passed. Right. Marty's. Yeah. You know, yeah he did. But yeah, just, um, mm -hmm. just a, oh, so mm -hmm. sorry. Like just, um, uh, really kind of taught you to be, be a, become a songwriter, right. To, to yeah. really oh, pick yeah. up the guitar and get going. That was, that was, mm -hmm. that was him. Yeah. I wanted to be him. You know, yeah. he was just, he was such an incredible singer and, um, yeah, he taught me to play guitar and, you know, I say he gave me the songs and the broken heart to pull them from. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he really was my first heartbreak for sure, as as so many dads are. Um, but again, the, a great teacher. I mean, he, from a very young age, I, I learned to to poetize. I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it up right now. <laughs> Use um, it. Yeah. Quoted. It's a new, it's a new thing. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right here. Um, yeah. to, you know, to the, the, my inner world and, um, and, you know, he would just make songs up on the spot. And so that really taught me how to conjure things in a moment, you know, like one minute there's no song and the next minute there's a song. I mean, that, that alone is like that process of creativity was an incredible thing to witness. And I saw it not just with him, but with the other musicians and artists that were around me growing up a lot. So I, I mean, well, I, only, at times only I was Gene super McClellan, judgmental of them. Eh? Gene, only Gene, Gene McClellan, that's it, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that uh right? yeah that's so that's amazing i actually i spoke with Catherine for a christmas episode of the podcast uh oh wow uh, two years ago now i guess uh about her uh 
one of her, her Christmas uh, releases there. So that was that was nice to speak with her about that. But yeah, and she's yeah. one of my best friends. Yeah, that's so awesome. And did you know? Did your and video, then our kids she's are friends. Oh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. That's so amazing. So there's like three no. generations of McClellan McLeans going on. <laughs> that's amazing, and no pressure on them to become songwriters, right? Or you know, yeah, is there nope, a nope. little bit, maybe not quite. <laughs> no pressure. No, God, the last thing we would ever do to our kids is is pressure them to be musicians. <laughs> it's yeah. like it really is a calling, you know, and they have to hear that from the inside of themselves. Um, I do have definitely have musician children, and so. Does she, but we just we stand way back um, and let them learn how they want to bring that to the world because it might like I think both Catherine and I come from the same school where it's like you know it's not about it's not about getting famous it's not about you know it's not about anything like that it really is just about sharing your work and if it's with one person awesome if it's with one million people awesome um, so you know, so we don't ever want to pressure our kids into thinking that they need to do the same things that we do. Nice. Um, but when they do suddenly write a song, <laughs> we're like, ah! yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you know, you're cheering. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And we're the opposite of, I think of stage mothers, you know, okay. those, those, yeah. cause we don't need to, um, what's the word? We don't need to compensate or live through our children's stage exactly. experiences. We have our own. You have so, right. you know, we love our, we let our children find their own way to the stage if that's what they choose. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, obviously your book as well touches on your music career and how you got started in the, the music industry, mm -hmm. kind of a, a classic tale of that time anyways, of being to kind of discovered out at, you know, not that so many people were, but you kind of heard about that a little more often. Um, back then than it is today today is all about like oh mm. they heard 30 seconds of your song on tiktok let's sign you to a major label deal no right. uh, you know the so i'd love to just before you know leading into talking about the the album uh that's coming out with this as well sparrow let's um i i'd just kind of give a bit of a background on how you started you were discovered on a boat playing mm -hmm. your guitar mm -hmm. let her feel the rain heading mm -hmm. to salt spring island and a couple of network uh, records uh, representatives heard you playing and said, mm -hmm. whose songs are those? They're, they're mine. Okay, you're going to be, you know, playing with Sarah Here's McLaughlin. Our card. Yeah, 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 exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's kind of a, a little cold on how that happened. But, you know, the start of your music career, how was that for you? Was it just absolutely a magical way to, to get started? No? Yes. Pure magic, pure magic. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, again, what are the chances, right? right? But, you know, my dad said something to me once, uh, Danny, my other dad, who's also a great singer, he's more musical theater guy. He's sort of like cool. Bing Crosby meets Fred Astaire guy. And um, yeah, and he said, you know, if, you don't, if you're not out there singing it, like you can sit in your bedroom your whole life and write and sing, and but if you're not out there doing it, no one's going to hear you. So, you know, just do it. Anyway, it was just this beautiful day um, here in British Columbia, and I was on the ferry with my friends, and we decided to jam, like pull out our guitars and sing. And uh, and so I sang that one song, and yeah, and, and not only was were they from Network, but one, uh, Tony Mariama, who was one of the, the women on the boat, was going to Sony. So she actually got me a publishing deal with Sony, who I'm still with after 28 years. Incredible. So that one moment of going, I think it's a beautiful day. Let's sing, you know, yeah. uh, suddenly in, and in public, like I wasn't busking. I wasn't, you know, uh, I was like, let's just sing for joy. And yeah. boom, this thing happens. Yeah. And all of a sudden my life takes this unbelievable trajectory yeah. like what's happening you know and <laughs> yeah. uh and i got to sing with some of the greatest singers in the world and play with great musicians and t make records and um you know so going from like that crazy little you know off-grid wildling you know kid to you know the heights of of these opportunities was just outstanding and um and, you know, I, again, I, you know, I made mistakes. I have regrets. I, you know, I did all these things, but, um, I'm just so grateful that I had the opportunity to make so many albums and have so many experiences. It's just, it's just been fantastic. And I'll, I'll never forget that moment. It is seared into my brain. And, <laughs> yeah. and you want to hear something crazy? I was on the, that ferry boat yesterday when I got the news about being a bestseller. Oh, that boat, eh? <laughs> I know. I just 
It's like the love boat. <laughs> Exciting love, yeah. and new. I like burst into tears. I, yeah. I was sobbing because I, yeah. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I'm Yeah, it's something about that boat. <laughs> That, that's like a, incredible like a portal <laughs> yeah and, and again details you get from the book but you you missed the previous fairy so you I this was the fairy. you know if you had made that other fairy who knows everything is on schedule <laughs> in the universe exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah that's incredible the the opportunities that opened up and i didn't mean to sound so like oh my god sony still has you on their publishing like i was just like yeah because you know i believe it uh, but it's just, it's cool because, you know, again, you hear in their book, they kind of like, like, take your time, do what you need to do. And mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if people really f- think that way about majors like that, you know, like right, it's yeah. a, sort of like, oh, either you do it, you make us money and, or, or you're, you're done. And mm-hmm. not to say that that doesn't happen, but I think this is a great, like, look what with, with you, right. They're like, no, take yeah. your time. We're with you every step of the way. I, yeah. I love that. Like that's, I think that's a good feel good story from a major yeah. like Sony to, to hear that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it really is about the people. I mean, they believed in me from the start and, yeah. and they just stuck with me, you know, through, uh, you know, a decade of not making any music because I was having my daughters and, um, and they were just like, don't worry. It's like, you'll, you'll make music when you make music. Yeah. And, and whenever I said, Hey, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like songs are coming through. Can you send me to Nashville or you send me to LA? And they were like, yeah, like yeah. let's send you somewhere to write a song. Like, and yeah. they didn't, they never said, write us a hit. They never said, right. you know, like nothing. They just wanted to see what came out of me. And no matter whether, like, whether I sold one album or a hundred thousand albums, like they just, they were just proud of me. And, and I, I just always felt like this little daughter that they pulled in and, uh, you know, I was a bit of a stray, you know, in a lot of ways. And, and, uh, and whether it was network or Sony, I mean, they just wrapped me in their arms and I was with Sony, I was network, sorry, for 15 years, which is incredible as well for, you know, made a bunch of records with them and yeah, so grateful. That was a great experience. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You you were a big fan of Sarah McLaughlin, probably still are. You you got to, mm-hmm. to meet her at a very young stage of your musical career. Just as yeah. a quick aside, was there anything that you took away from <laughs> I'm like, it seemed like you guys even became like, you know, good friends pretty quickly uh, as well. Yeah. yeah, she's incredible. I mean, she taught me so much. I mean, to have her be one of the first mentors, yeah. she did my hair and makeup for my first photo shoot. Yeah. Um, she, she's just been so kind to me through the years. I got to go on Lilith fair a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. she invited me to sing with her and the Indigo girls at what is still to this day, the greatest musical experience of my life. Um, she's, she's just an amazing woman. She's done such epic things and she always, always makes it about more than her. She always finds a way to to give back and uh, and to support others. And I just, it was just the perfect situation for me as a young singer to come in and there'd be like zero competition, zero like feeling. It's just like, come, 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 come. Like, this is so fun. Like, do this, yes. you know? And that was <laughs> such a great, so great energy to, to walk into rather yeah. than, you know, I think probably a lot of other, you know, young artists don't get that same kind of reception. And right. when I was writing the show, uh, a theater show called Atlantic Blue, which was celebrating East Coast music and their history, uh, she gifted me with, you know, uh, insight into her life and pictures no one else had had. So, you know, just being really supportive. And she's the one actually who told me to read Big Magic by Liz Gilbert when I was when I was looking for creative, you know, I don't know, like a spark. She said, this is the book pick that up. And, uh, I ran to the store and got it and it changed. It was definitely a changing moment too. So she, yeah, she's been, she's been epic in my life and in the lives of so many. I'm just, I just got like a sprinkling of her stardust. Um, (laughs) you know, like so many people have just, you know, basking in the glow of Sarah's shine is a wonderful thing. Well, that's amazing. I mean, and back then it wasn't easy. I mean, it's still not easy, but I think, you you know, as a woman in the industry then, Mm -hmm. right. I mean, you touch on that a little bit as well in terms of body image and just, you know, having somebody like that, maybe she even saw that in you as well as being a support system for, for her. Maybe she told you that maybe she never did. Maybe it's not true, but maybe that's what it was as well. Right. I I think she, I think she loved me, you know, I think, right. uh, Yeah. yeah, uh, And does. Yeah. It's a, she's, I feel really, really lucky. And, um, 
you know, a network. I mean, it, it was Lilith Fair, right? Like they had, they got Lilith Fair going. I mean, that was revolutionary. Mm. Um, and my experience there really, really changed my life and my perspective of myself and what it means to be a woman in the music business. I learned so much from the legends, you know, who'd been, you know, working it forever um, mm. and and fighting the good fight. So that by the time I came to the scene, it was like, well, right this way, <laughs> ma'am. You know, <laughs> yeah. it was there was nothing. There were really no glass ceilings to break. By the time I got there, I just got to bat. You know, enjoy enjoy the space that they created for me. Wow, that's mm -hmm. uh, so cool. Probably, mm -hmm. yeah, that's I don't know. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. However, um, we're kind of yeah. back. Like we're kind of back in a bit of a a backslide there. Of obviously okay. for women's rights and for yeah. you know where we stand in the in even in the music business and the airwaves. Um, you know, I talk about how when I went to Nashville, they said you should probably write a song from a man's perspective because yeah. you'll more than like more likely to get cuts. And I literally sat there in the chair and I'm like, what year, what century is this? A B. Yes. Um, I actually pretended to have a microphone. And I was like, and how do you feel about that? And I put it in front of <laughs> these two women and they said, it was just how it is. And I was like, gotcha. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Wow. So, um, yeah. So I kind of abandoned that because I have no idea what men are thinking. <laughs> no, <not> really right. <laughs> um, no. But, uh, you know, it was, it was just a real wake up call to make me realize like they, you know, <laughs> we, you still have to push against the patriarchy. Like they said, I'm still carrying my grandmother's picket signs, you know? So yeah. it's going to be something we'll always have to, to find the strength to do. But, um, you know, those are the women who led the way. And again, the, you know, there, there is a playbook for this. You just go out there and you shine and you don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something and you can't yep. lead and you can't prosper. And that, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that's really the playbook for that. So I'm trying to do that. Uh, absolutely. No, I think you are. And that is uh, again, big part of the book to take away for a lot of women, I think is the inspiration and your, your strength and determination Thank and, you, Thank you know, so standing your ground. I, I mean, from a, I guess from a man's perspective. Yeah. That's what, uh, <laughs> that, well, and uh, I also, I want to get the message to moms, you know, like yeah. I know what it's like to be in baby jail and mm. you know, I love my children fiercely, but yeah. they're like, some of us, we just need, we're being able to admit now that it's really hard because because we have to sort of tuck some of our dreams away a little bit like um you know and not all of us do and there's ways of continuing on and and you know and forging through but but there are surprises with becoming a mom that i think living you know what we think is an egalitarian relationship and everything's going to be equal we're going to be fine and suddenly you're like wait a minute why am i up all night you know why are what you know you just it just it's shocking um so I, I i really hope that my journey through my postpartum experience and my like resurrection <laughs> you know um is is inspiring to moms who are like Am I ever like, you know, am I ever going to be me again? You know, like I'm the mother role is so all encompassing. Am I ever going to find me again? And it's like, oh, not only are you going to find yourself, but you are going to be better because of it. And you'll, we'll be able to see the reasons and the ways that motherhood deepened us and made us stronger and made us more ready to be great leaders in the world and, and creative. Like you have to be so creative as a parent and, um, and as a partner and a wife and, and all that. And so uh, yeah, it just made me better. So I hope, I hope that that, and I, I'm very open about sharing my frustrations and my sorrows and my, yeah, yeah. my exasperation. Like I don't hold back on that. <laughs> no, and that's why it yeah. makes it such a, a, a wonderful read. And I, I was saying to you before we hit record, I was like, do I call it wonderful? Do I, is it, Aww. is it incredible? Is it, you know, but there's so much that you go through. It's like, I don't like, how does she mm. want it to be described and things like that? But it's all of these things. Mm. And it's just, uh, as you hear, please go, go read the book. Go go buy a copy it's a bestseller and it's just um it, it's it's real it's so it's so good it was just and as people have said you've had great reviews or yeah. quotes i should have called the reviews but quotes from from jan arden from dido from brian adams mm -hmm. from, uh you know, i can't remember the new york times uh art uh mm -hmm. writer who's there's yeah marissa stapley yeah yeah like you've mm -hmm. just been getting so go give it give it a read it'll inspire you in, in in many ways it's inspired me and the the album sparrow that accompanies it mm -hmm. is a beautiful accompaniment i actually i i had been listening to it a couple times your publicist beth had sent it to me so i was i was listening to it here and there but then i started reading the book and i was like okay 
I got to finish the mm. book and then I'm going to go listen to the album and see how mm. everything kind of resonates with me after that. And I felt like that was a really cool experience. Do whatever you want, oh, people. Good. But I thought that was a really cool experience to <laughs> read the book and then go listen to the songs. And then I've actually been going back and reading the book again and, and kind of feeling oh, wow. feeling out the how down the songs kind of you know it, it just well, i don't know i get page to page you don't know what tara mclean is going to go through uh in her <laughs> life it's it's absolutely uh it's 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 crazy but sparrow it is an accompaniment mm -hmm. to the book you have three new songs that you you mm -hmm. wrote kind of specifically not necessarily for the book but that work with it into this because a song like last kiss was written um a little bit before the book was was written mm -hmm. um yeah and um lay here in the dark that was yeah, also that's my next written. single mm -hmm. yeah amazing uh mm -hmm. oh, it's great songs and then there Thank were you. uh sorry seven other songs mm -hmm. that uh you you kind of brought back from your earlier career that just absolutely work what you were writing about Thank then you. you know and and how you've done it here the, the one thing i talk about you know i said is I, I love east coast lifestyle i love east coast people i love east coast sounding music i just mm. think that east coasters you guys know how to write a melody you know how to Don't write we? something that like is just <laughs> so damn good and so easy to listen to um T t talk to me about writing uh, mm. songs like 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 Sp Sparrow uh, for this specifically, and then we'll talk about revisiting your older songs uh, for, to accompany sure. this. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean it. It was it was a really it just made sense to yeah you know to have a, this one stop shop for the music, and um, there are still songs that I talk about in the book that I didn't record, but I. You know, I recorded the album kind of when I was halfway through writing, so I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to address. So, um, but you know, these are songs that were really pivotal to me, either like my favorite piece of poetry, which is like a, a song called Things Outstanding, which is about postpartum depression. Um, and I, like, I really love that song. I wanted to re-record it. And then um, Let Her Feel the Rain, of course, because that was one that opened all the doors for me. Evidence, my first single, um, you know, uh, Gosh, I, I just really, I really wanted to re-explore them and, you know, the, the woman in me wanted to meet the girl again because I'd been doing so much time machine travel. I thought how amazing to get intimate with the songs again. And I worked with Daniel Ledwell, who was so amazing and a dream producer experience. We spent a month by the lake, just, he's got this like wood-fired hot tub right on the lake and we would just like record and, and he's a genius and he's married to Jen Grant. And so I got to like hang with her and their babies and it was just like the best time ever. So there was that. And then, and then the new songs like Lay Here in the Dark um, is one of my favorite songs I've written. Um, and it's because I was going through a divorce, you know, we were in that dark time for humanity. Um, I was really like, I had a night where I was really scared of the tsunami of darkness that was kind of coming my way. And, and I was like, okay, the, the only thing you can do, you can't run away from it. I've never run away from it you know, when it comes, but this is a big one. So how, what do I do? And it was just like, be with it. Just be with the hugeness of the grief and make room for it. And and just lay here in the dark until it gets light is, you know, and, and, and sometimes that's the only action, you know, like you can't pretend to be positive and have all this, like, you have to just be in the darkness. Like Peter Gabriel has this line and the darkness still has work to do. And as a young writer, I was like, what does he mean by that? You know, like darkness having work to do. And, and now that darkness has done so much work on me, um, it, I feel, I really felt like that that song had to come through and it saved my life for sure. And, um, and one of my favorite lines I've ever written is in that song. And that's, um, teach me how to bow when I am breaking. And it's like, if we can throw gratitude into the middle of a painful experience, like if we can get like witness ourselves, not detach or, you know, or in, or dissociate during a painful experience, but just like witness it and go, Oh gosh, okay. This is hard. This is brutal. And thank you for this, because I know on the other side of this, I'm going to be deeper and better and stronger and all the things, because that's what the past has told me. Hopefully, that, if, if I've gathered any wisdom, it's that line. Teach me how yeah. to bow when I'm breaking. And it's asking love and asking, you know, life to just remind me that I can just say, okay, I'm, I'm breaking apart and I know that I'm going to pick up the pieces after and, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be all right. Um, 
and just breathe. <laughs> you know, breathe. just breathe and just just be with it. So that song is really important to me. And then Sparrow is like the title track. And yeah. it's just like it's got a good vibe, I think. And because that's one thing, if I can say anything about the book that I'm proud of, it's that for every, you know, it's, it is a roller coaster, but I always bring you out. You know, I always bring you in, into the light, no matter what. And you can trust that. You can trust that when you go in and read it. So people who are like, oh, I'm, you know, I have that little warning at the beginning of the book about, you know, these are some things we're going to deal with. And then I say, but, you know, in, I almost wanted to put a different kind of trigger, trigger alert. Like, you're going to be really inspired. So be careful. Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I had one girlfriend who was like, I'm going on retreat for five days after she read it. <laughs> She's like, yeah. I'm just going, I'm going to take care of me. You know, so I, yeah, I think that's the good thing is you can trust I'll take you out and the best compliment I got about the book was that you couldn't put it down. And so that's what I want. Correct. You know, I want people to like hold the book and go, yeah, okay. And then listen to the songs and feel yeah. like they embed differently. Um, and because it's just intimacy, right? Like yeah. some, yeah. someone said a, a great teacher, there's a Ahe Dogen, who's an, a Zen master says that um, uh, enlightenment is just intimacy with everything. Mm. And I love that because yeah intimacy with life, like being present in your life, being present with like, that's, that's what this book was for me. It was a chance to get intimate with me and my life and then the human condition as well. Mm -hmm. And then now hopefully the music is that other layer. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's so good. And, and like, you know, it is, it, I couldn't put it down either. I was, I'll be honest, since, since you're so open, I'm going to be open. When, yes. when I got the, uh, the email in my inbox about, about your, your book and the album, I was like, wow, this sounds incredible. I, I yes, I'd, I'd love to talk with Tara about this. And so I was like, can you, Beth, can you send me the book? And so she sent me the PDF and I was like, oh my goodness, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, like six books that I'm still reading. <laughs> and I'm like, because yeah. it takes me forever to read yeah. books. We have two kids as well. And so everything oh, is just wow. like, it's like, it's just crazy. So like by the end of the night, it's kind of like, let's just watch TV. The weekend, let's do mm -hmm. something. Oh, we're going on vacation. And it's not a vacation. It's a trip. You can't sit down and read a book. So I was yeah. like, when I saw this, I was like, okay, yes, Homework. Okay, let's, let's do <laughs> yeah. this. You know what? Let's make me, you know, read a book. And I don't mean make me in a, in a, in a bad way, but let's give me a reason to, to kind of get it. And I, I, same thing. I was like, any opportunity I had, I had it on my phone cause it's a PDF. I had it open. I was reading it, not just because I knew I was going to talk to you, but because it's like, Oh my, what's happening in the next page. What's the next chapter. But like you mm -hmm. say, you always, you always come out of it. You always come out of it inspired. Um, you know, there's some like, chapters that kind of leave you you know, lingering, kind of hanging, what is going to happen next. But yeah, as you see, you keep, you, you come out of it and you're talking about that, that great quote uh, or your, your great line lyric from um, lay here in the dark. I just want to mention one of mine from you is all the choices I've made take a toll that I have paid. When I heard you sing that and mm. things outstanding, I was like, they just hit me in a way. I yeah. was like, yeah, like there's, I, the choices all have, they they all have a tool whether it's positive or or mm -hmm. negative it's just i was like man I, I that's what i love about you songwriters is like you know how to put <laughs> words you know how to put things into perspective what like, what, mm -hmm. what we you know normal people can't really <laughs> understand or or figure out or want to say and you just like instead of saying what we feel we just get angry but um not that we don't, <laughs> but it's just uh, that that really stood out to me because you mm -hmm. you had a great uh, line that you loved from gene mcclellan take a look at yourself and you yeah. can you can look at others differently which uh you know as you mentioned really stands out to you so yeah um it's just uh, what, what things i was saying as you mentioned is uh is a really important song to you um yeah. Can you, can you talk just a little bit more about that mm. song and, and as well as I'd love to talk quickly about if I fall as well. Oh, I sure. Think, yeah, awesome. <laughs> totally. Well, things outstanding. Um, I wrote with, uh, Ron Lapata and Simon Wilcox, who are two incredible song Canadian songwriters. Um, but I started it, I started it with just like this poem and, you know, the, in the book I share about the time when I had first had Sophia uh, my first born child and she, you know, it was a difficult birth and she was colicky and, and, um, and then my sister died when she was only a few months old. And then my marriage fell apart within weeks. And I was like, what is happening to my life? And, and, and I definitely, 
you did not know how I was going to get through that. It was like, mm. you know, the hat trick of awfulness, like just yeah. bam, bam, bam. And, and, uh, and I used to, you know, just laugh to myself, like, I'm just going to have to make reservations at some, like, you know, somewhere and check myself in and, uh, and figure it out. But I, yeah. you know, I just, I got through it. And, and one thing was I, I re- wrote this part of this poem, the table set, the beds are made. It seems I let them slowly fade. You know, like I, I was doing all the things I was going through the motions to try and like keep my life together. But inside I was just like, I was just devastated, but I, you know, I'm such an optimistic person and I was just like, I've got this. And, but, but then what happened magically was Kim and Davnit, Kim Stockwood and Davnit Doyle, um, came at just the right time and they were just so, so loving. And, you know, and in the line, I say, um, uh, you know, here I am at winter's birth called to from beneath the earth, like, you know, I just had Sophia, I had her on like near the solstice, like right at winter solstice. And, and yet I just, I was giving birth and yet like, I was so devastated. I just wanted to die. You know, like I, it was just like such a crazy moment of like ecstatic love and deep grief. Like it, it just almost pulled me apart, this tension of opposites that was happening. And so that song really came from that place. It like, it lived in that liminal space in between. And so and I just love the poetry. Like, it doesn't even feel like I wrote it. Like, I'm like, oh, I like that. Like, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It, and honestly, it might be like, I, I love all the songs. I love what you, you've done with all the songs on here because it, mm. it, not, it, I, I, it was kind of interesting to hear, you know, the original versions of, you know, like right. silence or evidence and divided silence is more kind of similar to the original version, but um, it is, it was like, I, I, did, did it feel more natural going back to these songs like if i fall and writing mm-hmm. them this way then it i mean i'm sure look listen to me i'm back and forth here just because as i ask questions i'm kind of like well maybe she well probably not <laughs> but what what i like it just feels so good the way that you you've you've done these songs um mm-hmm. i was just wondering how, if it felt better this way than it did when you originally wrote them you know mm-hmm. back, back and was recording them yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, revisiting If I Fall, for example, I mean, when we produced it, we we were going, I was with Capitol Records, we were going for a hit song, we wanted radio yeah. play. I didn't even know what I was talking about in the song, honestly. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. you know. I, I don't just, know what you're talking about either, to be I, honest. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I still don't really, is, but, no. <laughs> but just more like, you know, it was just like about getting upbeat and young and pop princessy and, you know, and, and it's still a cool production and, I, the, mm-hmm. you know, the video is still interesting. Um, but but You'll Dan, read about that. right? <laughs> yes. Read about but that. Daniel Ledwell and I, we talked about you know how do we reapproach this music? He's like, you're a, you're a woman, and you are like like a song like that's me, which is one of my very favorite songs from my first record. Mm. We we dropped the key, we slowed it down. Yeah. It's like you know what is the difference between a like a hyped up girl living in L.A. like signed to a major, and this peaceful woman in the hot tub by the lake. <laughs> Yeah. Know, like, what's yeah. the difference? And, yeah. you know, who's been through marriages, been through childbirth, been through, you know, so much and is still just like rocking life. Right. So like, what is, what is that? And it, and we just wanted to make it lush and beautiful and a little bit calmer, I think. Um, and that feels really good. That's so mm-hmm. good. It, it feel it feels so good. It feels like such a great accompaniment, like you say, to the book you wrote, you know, the album is indeed the soundtrack to the book, which gives the story a new dimension of experience for the reader. Just have it in front of me so I don't mess anything up. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, it just I, I I loved I loved every every uh, every minute of the album. All again, the melodies are just like, East Coasters. You guys know you guys know how to do it. You know how to write the lyrics. You know how to make people sit and think. And um, you know, just I I'd be remiss not to just touch on Last Kiss, which is an absolutely mm. you know beautiful but heartbreaking song written mm. for your sister mm-hmm. my, my first thought was like oh man like you know, what, what did did you just sit down and you were like i gotta write a song about my sister and then i would later on read that it came to you really you know days recent, after days mm-hmm. after she was uh, unfortunately killed in a car accident mm-hmm. car crash i'm not sure how you mm-hmm. would kind of label that but yeah. um you know what what was it how, how is, it, is it still hard to play is it is it hard to do that song is it hard to listen to mm, no it's not hard to listen to or, or mm. sing i mean 
there are definitely moments in life that are still hard. It's been 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, but there are things that happen that are like major moments that I'm like, oh, I wish she was here. And then I'm like, wait a minute, she is here. She's always here. Like I, you know, I, I, I have that with this one song called Love Never Dies and it's also about her. Um, but yeah, this song is Last Kiss is because when she died, she was um, pulled over to the side of the highway, like on the shoulder with her partner and the reason she pulled over was because she said I can't go another minute without kissing you and so she thought she was getting a kiss and someone just came around the corner and hit the car so um I wrote it I recorded it when I was in the throes of grief like deep deep grief and then I put it away and then we wanted to write a song or bring a song about Shay to the book to the record of course because it's such a big part of the book and I said wait a second I have something and we found it and pulled it out and Dan learned it because um, I didn't even remember what chords I was playing I was just in such a crazy space and and uh, and we pulled it out and I, it's got a really it's like it's so sad but it's also got this kind of like floating on a river feeling to it you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking, too, when listening to the chorus, just the way that you I'm not going to try singing this part, but just the way that you take the take us through the chorus. It's like kind of you can feel these moments of of grief within it. And then as you get higher, it's kind of like a little it's that lifting feeling that, that I think yeah. that you're, you're talking about. And, yeah, uh, the, that side of the, the song. So it um you, you nailed nailed the, those emotions and uh you know it's it's one of those songs where you kind of almost have to r remind yourself if you know the story what you're you're singing about it could be yeah about about love just well it is about love but you know yeah. just you know any kind goodbye. of goodbye mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. exactly right so it's um but then just the way you you just took you know having looked at that it's like no she's still here i think is a kind of a great way to, to wrap up our chat, Tara, because you Thank talk you. about your, your book being, you know, looking at so many hard situations, but as you say, the light, the, you know, you're going to leave inspired. And I hope people listening to this conversation, listening to your album, reading your book, exactly, do exactly that, leave inspired to go do what you need to do you know, dream go, big go just there get it go dream it go dream it make it Ex happen mm -hmm. exactly exactly mm -hmm. so you're on a little bit of a book tour now you're gonna go on mm -hmm. a big book tour and uh play some of the songs as well with with That's that right. yeah. yeah and talk to people and we have to do this little q a which is my favorite part and yeah. you know it was one thing doing those with um you know at the beginning when the book was just coming out because no one had really read it so, but now that the book is out uh, and the tour will be sitting in front of people, uh, hopefully who've read the book, it's going to be really, really fun and fantastic to, to share that conversation. Cause that's what I want to do. I want to open up that conversation and um, yeah, and get people looking at their own lives and ways that they can, you know, remove obstacles and keep moving forward and keep being of service to each other and mm -hmm. of love and to love really. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, Tara, thank you so much. Not for, for the book for being open, for being uh, so strong and giving a lot of people inspiration and power and, and, and wisdom. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to read your book, listen to your music and speak with you today. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me on the release day series mm -hmm. podcast. Oh, thank you so much, Alex. Thanks for diving so deep. It means a lot to me. You can discover more podcast episodes as well as our limited video series on our website, www.releasedayseries.com. And if you'd like to support the show, we've added that option to the website as well. Send us a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, whatever you'd like. Any support helps. But most importantly, we appreciate you listening and sharing the podcast. Mm -hmm.